usually this would be a salad of just radishes, cranberries, dry cranberries have been reconstituted, reconstituted in cranberry juice. Okay. All right, so that you can't really do it. You can do fresh cranberries, but it won't be the same. And then we take the juice from reconstituting them uh -huh. and reduce it down so it becomes syrupy and use that as a sauce so we concentrate the cranberry flavor even more. Yeah. So you have the tartness of the cranberries, the spice of the radishes, and the richness of the So these two cut this, basically. Right. Right. And then the, that's uh, arugula salvetta. That's a little bit more spicy. Arugula? Yeah, arugula salvetta. Salvetta. Got it. So we have uh, cranberry juice. Cranberry juice? 250 grams. Or a cup. You want to call it a cup? Yep. You're a British guy. You're used to the grams and mills now. I try. You try, really? <laughs> then we got simple syrup. This is made from cranberry yeah. juice and sugar. So simple syrup. syrup is always one part by volume of sugar, one part by volume of liquid water. In this case, cranberry juice. Right? And that just helps the sugar in there. Two things. One, it cuts the acidity of cranberry juice. And two, it helps us to give structure to the sugar the solid. Yep. So it helps when we when we make the meringue, we whip it up, it helps for the meringue to hold and to go up. No sugar, it'd be kind of hard. But this is a meringue that doesn't have any eggs in it. Remember. An egg-free meringue. An egg-free meringue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and this is what makes it egg-free. So that's called Brzezowit 600K. Except, sorry? It's your Brzezowit 600K. Soy. Soy protein. A soy protein, I get. Yeah. Come same thing. Yes. A tiny little bit, like 0.3 grams. And for this, to do it at home, you need a coffee scale. And for people that are... Oh, you can find your narco narco traffic. Yeah, you can yeah, find yeah, your narco traffic. Like scale, but we don't we don't do any of that stuff. You can call the Dallas Police Department and say, uh, "Hi, I wondered if you you recovered any scales recently." I think I broke them. So what we're going to do is, ideally, we'd want to sift this in here. You can do this by hand. It works as well. And you see how finely powdered this stuff is? Oh yes, it's super finely powdered. It actually flies in the air. And the gum zantan. And the gum zantan is also a stabilizer, so what it does is it gives the scotch to the mix, and that helps that when you whip it up again, it stays up. Okay? Yep. Great. Alright. Yep. You can do this completely by hand, and you can see that we're already getting airing here. By right. hand. Or we can put it on the machine, and we're going to get the same results. The wonder of Hobart will uh, mm -hmm. whip this up. As long as there's no fat present in this, it'll be fine. There's no fat in the bowl, there's no fat on the whip. Yep. You get the results. And already you've seen a, it's already doubled, tripled in volume. Substantial, yes. No egg whites at So I already have a meringue that has an egg. For me, the rule is on foam, foams, meringues, and airs, you really got to use, your base product has got to be something that's packed with flavor, because what you're doing is you're pumping air into it, so what you're doing is you're diluting flavor. Yeah. So if we, if we have something very subtly flavored, you're going to make it almost non-existent. You're going to knock all, whatever, what little flavor it has in it, you're going to knock it all out. This should be pretty constant. Yeah, coffee would be a good thing. Anything that has real cranberry juice, grapefruit juice, all these things that use you, they'll got big flavors, you know. Yeah. Lots of flavor, right? So we got the meringue pretty much we can and we can re rip this as many times as we want. In other words, if I if I use part of this today, put it I can put it in the refrigerator tomorrow, pull it out, re whip it. Really? So is there a, is there the problem of over whipping that you can have with not that I've seen, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean it does get brittle. Yeah. But again it just as it sits, it loses air and it goes back to where Liquid. There'll be still supposed to be some bubbles on top of it. Yeah. But there'll be liquid in the bottom of it. Got it. Right? So cranberries. Then we're going to take some fresh goat cheese. We're going to crumble it in there. Should be more of the uh, traditional. Pretty 
usual part of the recipe. And we have some extra virgin olive oil. Squirt it in there. And we're going to toss it real gently so that the goat cheese doesn't get liquid. It remains lumpy. Lumpy, yeah. Uh, then the other part is we're going to do so. The other contrast is going to be hot or warm. So we have cold, hot, and cold room temperature. So this we're going to do straight up on the griddle. We're going to have to go over on the griddle for that. We're going to take the cheese and we're going to put it right straight on here with nothing. Right. Nothing at all. Its own fat will provide the fat. Yeah, its own fat will provide the fat. And then its own protein will cause the crust to form. And then the spatula, I'm heating it up right now so that it doesn't stick to the cheese. That's a good trick. Hot yeah, the spatula. Yeah. yeah, hot spatula. The cheese is hot. Yeah. Both spatula sticks to it like glue. And sometimes, even though it's hot, it still sticks to it. Yeah. And to our uh, re viewers at home, mm -hmm. uh, right in front of this griddle is extremely hot. These guys must be made of iron. Like Iron Man. Iron Chef, huh? Yes. All right. So we kind of lost the crust here, but we can put it back on. It's real important that this is clean. Otherwise, again, it sticks. Yep. And we want to release the crust little by little. So we're keeping that crust on. Yeah, we visual and it. taste reasons. All right. Griddle at home, you can use a pan. A non stick pan would probably be best, but if you're going to use a metal spatula and a non stick pan, you're probably going to scratch it. So now we're cutting up the, or chef is cutting up the cheese, ready for plating. Spanish training coming in with a healthy amount of extra virgin olive oil. It's lubricant, sir. <laughs> and then we have the meringue right here. That's the meringue? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you can put it on the side if you want, or we just we always put it on the top. And it stays in a meringue even though it's on the hot cheese. Mm -hmm. During service. That looks beautiful. 